All right, welcome back to another part 107 test prep video. Here we're going to be talking about taps. Taps are very similar to METARs, which I've discussed in previous videos. Feel free to check those out if you want to. But whereas METARs are for the current weather conditions, taps are forecasted weathers for the next, you know, 24 to 30 hours. So one thing right off the bat you might notice about taps is that they are longer than METARs, and that's because they're covering the weather over a longer amount of time. Sort of one other differentiator between TAPS and METARs is that they have these special keywords. They're telling you that there's going to be a change in the weather. And those four things that you want to look out for are FM, which means from, tempo, which is short for temporary, prob, which is short for probability, and BECMG, which is short for becoming. So every time you see one of these four, you can anticipate that the following conditions are uh, the result of a change in the weather. This first one from, it sometimes tells you the date and then here the time, so 1930. And these are uh, rapid changes. Um, they're normally a change from the original conditions that are mentioned in the first line. Um, and every time you see this FM, it's typically going to be on a new line. So if we take a look at this first tap here, you can see that on line two, three, and five, we have that new line where it's saying, from this time, you can expect these conditions. Temp for temporary, these changes are for any conditions in wind, visibility, weather, or sky that are expected to last uh, generally less than an hour. Here, you'll see the date and then the hour. So here is actually is lasting for two hours, uh, but these are temporary. They're not lasting that long. Uh, next, we have prob. This is the probability or chance of thunderstorms or other precipitation events happening. And then they also have the associated weather conditions. And then it the number right after prob is the percentage of that condition. Sometimes in the forecast, you're not 100% sure if this condition is going to happen. So that's where you'll see prob. And once again, it has the date, followed by the hour. Then we have a becoming. Uh, this is typically a gradual change in conditions expected over a longer time period. Once again, we have date and then the hour and then the end date, end hour. So yeah, these are our four things to look out for in our TAFs. So, so we have two example problems for this KMEM airport. I think it will be super helpful if we just go through this line by line and then take a look at the two example problems afterwards, because I think sometimes you don't really want to rush into these tasks because there's a lot of information being portrayed in the TAF. So you want to make sure you're not just like skimping over. So let's go ahead and start off with identifying what's in the first line. So that KMEM is for what airport this is. This is the Memphis airport. So we just have that airport code. And then the next section is the date and time at which this Taft was issued. So we would say on the 12th of whatever month we're currently in at 1720 Zulu. So that would be about 520 PM. If you converted it out of uh, military time. All right, uh, then we're given this interval. So remember when I said that TAFs are typically between 24 and 30 hours long? Here we're saying that this is valid from the 12th starting at 1800 through the 13th at 2400. So here we're looking at 30 hours, right? So this is really important to know this line because the subsequent froms will reference times within that interval and you want to make sure you know on which day it's happening. Uh, moving on to the next thing, just like with METARs, we have our wind direction. So we have 200, the wind is going in the direction of 200 degrees true at 12 knots. And our visibility, next thing is five statue miles. And then we have HZ. Uh, let's go scroll down to our little cheat sheet. HZ is haze. So we have hazy weather. Haze. And then let's see what's next. We have broken clouds. Broken clouds at about 3,000 feet. And then, okay, so now we have our first prob, or there's a probability or chance of some sort of precipitation event. So it's saying there's a 40% chance. There's a 40% chance from 2,000 to 2,200 that there is going to be uh, one statute mile of visibility, and there's going to be TS, which is thunderstorms, thunderstorm, and rain rain um, along with overcast 
800 feet clouds and then CB uh, is a type of cloud. So that's our first line. You can see just how much information is included here. So let's go ahead and look at the second line. Now we have one of these from. So it's saying from 2200, that's 10 p.m. on the 12th. We're gonna have some sort of condition that's different than what was just recorded in that first line, okay? So from 2200, looks like our wind is slightly changing. So now it's at 33 degrees true at 15 knots. And then we have gusts at 20 knots. We have greater than six statute miles of visibilities. We have broken clouds at, add the two zeros. Uh, we have overcast clouds at 2,500 feet. And then we have another probability. So there's a 40% chance from 2,200 to 0200 that there is going to be three statute miles of visibility with sh and ra which sh stands for showers rain showers because we have ra and sh and that is line number two so you can see there are differences between one and two that are being pointed out in this task so for one thing we have the difference in the wind direction we have the difference in the wind speed uh, we have gusts starting from 2200, our visibility is different, our cloud coverage is different, and even our precipitation events are different. That's why it's important to have these updates within the TAF of what is predicted. Okay, let's move on to three. So we're looking at line number three. So from 0200, and think to yourself, is this going to be on the 12th or the 13th? and why did you pick one over the other? If you said that this is on the 13th, you would be absolutely correct. The reason is, remember that the time interval we're looking at here is on the 12th from 1800 to the, th to the 13th at 2400. So if we're looking at what is effectively 2 a.m., that would have to be on the 13th because we start the TAF at 6 p.m. on the 12th. Okay, so this is on the 13th from 2 a.m. Our wind is in the direction of 350 true. Well, it's at the speed of 12 knots. We have overcast clouds at 800 feet. There's a 40% chance from 0200 to 0500, so from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., that we have two statute miles of visibility and we have rain, rain slash snow. Then, okay, so now we have a becoming. This means that there's some sort of gradual change in conditions expected over a longer time period. So this becoming, so this these conditions become from 0600 to 0800, the wind becomes 20 degrees true at eight knots, and then the cloud coverage is broken at 1200 feet. That's line number three. Line number four says, becoming, it's another becoming, a gradual change, becoming, and then it's, here it says the date, so the 13th at 1000 to, to 1200, it looks like we have, if you ever see all zeros here, this means that there is no wind, it's calm, calm, you have three statute miles of visibility, uh, BR stands for, if you remember my little trick from a previous video, this is baby rain, so this is mist, and it's scattered clouds, okay? And then we see a temp. So tempo, as I mentioned before, is any conditions in wind, visibility, weather, sky that lasts generally for less than an hour, or it's just temporary, like two hours, for example. So it says from the 12th at 1200 to the 12th at 1400. So from noon to 2 p.m., we have one half statute miles of visibility and then we have fg which i believe stands for fog yep fog fog and that is line number four so now let's finish it off with line number five so five we have from it says the date 13th at 1600 so from about 4 p.m we're going to be having variable 
uh, wind, that means that there isn't a one direction that the wind is going in. So it's variable at six knots. And then we have greater than six statute miles of visibility. And then we have scattered cloud coverage. And then this equal sign, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, are we suddenly doing math here or something? No, this just means it's the end of the TAF. So you'll see it's at the end of the TAF for KMEM, -E and then there's another equal sign at the end of the next TAF. So that just means like, stop reading, this is the end of the TAF. That about covers our TAF. You can see there's so much information from this TAF that we got. So uh, let's go ahead and go back to our practice problem, which says, what is a valid period for the TAF of KMEM? See if you can figure this out on your own, and then I'll go over the answer. So the correct answer here is C from 1800 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. How do I know that? Well, so remember this first time is the date and time at which this TAF was issued, but then the information after that represents the period. So issued versus period is slightly different. Issued is probably going to be before the period, and the period is going to be typically between 24 to 30 hours. So from 1800 on the 12th to 2400 on the 13th makes this the right answer. These other two are incorrect. This first one would be correct if we had something like 12, 12, 13, 12, but that's not what we have here. And B would be true if we had 12, 12, 13, 18, okay? Um, but since it's 12, 18, 13, 24, the correct answer is C. Let's move on to another problem. So in this one, it says, what is the forecast wind for KMEM from 1600 Zulu until the end of the forecast? With this one, let's go ahead and look back to our analysis of the TAF to see if there's anything that's referenced from 1600, okay? So, so let's go ahead and see when the time periods of each of these lines is from. So this first one is sort of the general conditions. So you can anticipate that would be from about 1800 until whatever is mentioned in the second line. So um, 1800 to 2200 is not that 1600 that we're looking for. We also have 2000 to 2200. That's also not what we're looking for. The second line, the second line is from 2200 to about 2 a.m. Still not what we're looking for. From 200 to 500, still not what we're looking for. And then we have 600 to 800, also not what we're looking for. The fourth line, we have 1000 to 1200, not what we're looking for. And then also 1200 to 1400, still not what we're looking for. So hopefully it's gonna be in this last line. And yes, it is. So it's saying from 1600, and then you can assume it's going to be to the end because it's that last line that we have. So this is gonna be from 1600 to 2400. How do I know it's 2400? Because that's when our taft ends. So since there isn't another line after that, there isn't any more updates to the forecast. And so what are our conditions here? We have variable wind at six knots. So let's see if that is an answer. That is 100% an answer. It's variable in the direction at six knots. So this first part is our direction. The second part is our wind velocity. B is incorrect. This would be true if we had zero, 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 there's one more zero, KT, where we have uh, no direction, no speed, there's no wind. But that is not what we have in that last line of our taft, so it's incorrect. A is incorrect. This would be true if it was VRB 04 KT. That is also not what we see in our TAF. That hopefully gives you some insight into these TAF reports. Let me know if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you and I hope you have a great rest of your day.